I want to go through a full overview of the menu options on this machine. It might seem intimidating because there's a lot of variability of how you can wrap your pallets available to you on this unit. Truth is, you probably won't use all the bells and whistles on this machine, but it sure is nice to have them and know how to use them if you do have a lot of variability in how you want to wrap your pallets. Let's take a look. So if you hit the jog down button, it's going to get you to the main menu. First thing you see here flashing is function keys. This is where you would enable the six icons on the control panel to either serve as quick start pallets one through six. So you can see P1 through P6, or you could change them to the ability to select the setting that corresponds to the picture that's in there. You can see here, when we ship it out, we have it as P1 through P6. Then you have save user program. This is where you would input the pre-configured pallet wrap cycle and save any changes you made to it. Then you have load user program. If you're wanting to use any save pallet wrap cycles besides the quick select, those one through six I discussed, you would do that here because you can save up to 32 pallet cycles on this machine. So for example, you wanted to select save pallet number seven, you would do it right here. Then you have cycle type. This is where you would select the type of cycle you'd want to run. For example, if you want the machine to wrap the pallet with the carriage going up to the top of the pallet and then back down, or if you would want it to only wrap upward and then stop, or if you wanted to stop, start at the top and go downwards. Um, there's some more detail on that we'll do in another video. Cycle parameters, this is where you really fine tune how you want the pallet to be wrapped. So you can change anything from the tension, the turntable speed, the carriage speed, the number of bottom and top wraps, here, there's, there's a lot more you can do as well. We'll go through that specifically in another video. Then you have manual controls, which we talked about earlier. This is where you would go to be able to use the manual portion of the machine. Then you have coil change procedure. We talked about that when you load the film, you could go here and select it to bring the carriage to an ergonomic position so you can load and unload the film easily. Then you have general parameters. This is where you would enable different options that you may have purchased with this machine. For example, if you bought a top press with this unit or a remote control, you would go here to enable those features. This is something we would do at the factory. In these settings, there really isn't much you as a user should need to change. Then you have current values. Here you can see the current values of different aspects of the machine. The only one here you as a user might find useful is a carriage height. This would be useful if you want to specify a specific reinforcement height you want to wrap. By going here, you could determine which height you would want that set at. Then you have password. This is an area where you can lock out certain functions of this machine so that the users can, can't make any changes to certain areas of the machine. Password change, here's where you could change that password. Date and time, you could change the date and time here. USB features, uh, this is where you can upload and download the parameter data and usage data. Um, this is more for our use when we preset the machine before we ship it out. Uh, and again, if you did something in you, at your place and someone messed up the settings, we could always uh, get you back um, some information so that you could load a USB to here and get it back to the specific settings. Then you have service and maintenance.